everyone, my name is Nia, if we have not met before, and I am an incoming second year student at SCAD. I am so excited, it is coming so quick here in the next couple of weeks. So before we get there, I wanted to let those incoming freshmen as well as some prospective students know some advice and also answer some questions that you all have asked me as well as some experiences and insight that I personally would like to share. And I also asked some current SCAD students what some insight they think should be mentioned in the video that they wish they would have known before coming. So I've got all that listed out. We're going to talk about a bunch of things and hopefully this helps answer a lot of your questions. So without further ado, let's get on to it. So how did I find my roommates? I personally found my roommate first. We met on the SCAD 2026 Facebook page. They also have a SCAD 2026 Instagram profile, which we met our two sweet mates on. You basically submit a few pictures of yourself along with a bio of some things that you're interested in, your major hobbies, how you like to live in a room, how you would accommodate other people. My roommate and I saw each other's posts and I reached out to her after seeing hers and we decided that we would be a really good fit. They also have a SCAD 2027 page. If you aren't already on that, get on it. And they have one usually for every class. It's a great way to also get to know friends. I loved having that page because not only did I meet my roommates, but I met so many cool friends before going to SCAD just from messaging on Instagram back and forth throughout the year. If you don't find people, it's okay when you apply for housing. You will be able to fill out a form that basically tells what your likes and dislikes, if you like the room cold or warm, if you're a night owl or a morning person, and they'll try to place you and accommodate you with people that like to live similarly in that regard. You know some people that went in random and they did just fine. As far as dorm living goes, go check out my dorm tour. I personally lived at The Hive. First year students can live at Chatham, The Hive, or Turner. How you get into your room is you use your key card, so your ID gets you in everywhere. That will get you into any SCAD building, although I will say, as far as in the residence halls, only your key card gets you into your dorm building, such as I lived in Garden at The Hive, I could only use my key card to get into Garden. I couldn't use my key card to get into Aviary. So if I had one of my best friends was in Aviary, she had to let me in every time I went in there. Let's talk about transportation. Bike, car, bus system, everything. I personally had my car and I really liked having my car. I don't think it's needed, but I will say get a bike or use the SCAD bike share. I mean, I, I knew so many people that didn't have a car or a bike and just used the SCAD bike share to get everywhere. I biked everywhere around Savannah. I liked to bike to the library. I biked to Chatham to get food. Savannah's a very bikeable city, I'd say. They have bike lanes most places and it's beautiful weather. I will say some of the buildings can be spread out so you can walk a lot of places, but for example, Arnold Hall in correspondence to the Hive and Wallen, where you have like some of those foundation and general education courses that most everyone has to take, those are farther away. So you'll either want to take the bus or bike. My friends would make it a routine to walk after class. They would, you know, take a good like long 35-ish minute walk back and walk through Forsyth, which can be gorgeous. Just letting you know things can be a little bit more spaced out. Parking situation, you can have a free parking pass as well as a free bike decal. If you're a first year student, you can only park at the Hive. If you live in Chatham, you cannot get a parking decal, so you're not allowed to have a car. That is one thing I would say about Chatham. I've heard people really like the location of Chatham, very accessible to walk everywhere, close to a lot of buildings, right next to Forsyth Park, gorgeous area, great dining hall, but you can't have a car there. So, just something to note. But if you live at Turner or the Hive, you can park at the Hive only. That is where your decal works. There's a lot of street parking available next to SCAD buildings, but if you're going to class, I would definitely recommend just biking or walking or take the bus. That leads me into the bus system. I did not ever master the bus system, so I'm not the best person to ask about the actual B-line. I took the direct bus. They have three direct bus lines. They take off from inside of the hive. So they go from the hive to Anderson, Wallen, and Arnold. So those are the three direct line buses that are really nice because those three buildings are where foundation and general education courses are taught. I just took that direct bus back and forth 
every every time I had to go to class. I never had any classes that were at buildings that were far enough for me to have to not take a direct bus or walk to. If you're someone that's not bringing a car, don't worry, you'll be able to find a ride. But I will say, if you're someone that does not have a car and you're asking people for rides as being on the other end of it, please be respectful and offering to pay for gas money. Definitely get the Park Savannah app for um, places that require payment. So the types of transportation that's provided by SCAD is the B-Line, which is the bus system. They have a late night shuttle and SCAD safe ride. Let's say it's late at night and the B-Line has stopped working. If you're at any SCAD building, you can call and they they will take you from one building back to your dorm. Let's talk about classes. Absences and attendance policy. You can be late up until 15 minutes past your start time. If you have a class that starts at 8, if you show up after 8.15, there's no like tardy or whatever. It's just absent. You're accounted absent. And you only get four absences until you fail the class. I knew someone in one of my classes that showed up late consistently and got over that four um, absent mark because of the tardiness, not even because of the missing classes, but because of the tardiness and they filled the class. And it was like class 17 that was their final one. I mean, it was so close to the end, so that stinks. Don't do that. Another reason not to miss class, I know it's easy sometimes, like when you're 8 a.m. to wake up, you're like, well, oh, maybe today's just a work day. I could just stay here. Well, you're paying for your professor's time too. Like your professor is a very, very valuable resource. And not to mention scholarships aside, this is just the value and the cost of one, one course at SCAD. It's $4,345, which is wild. And even if you have scholarships, like just put that value at least in your head and be like, I'm here learning from the best of the best. Show up for class, even if it's a work day, you can ask your professor questions. Another thing about classes at SCAD, you have three classes. They're each two and a half hours long, meets twice a week, so that's 15 credit hours total per week. Don't fret about the two and a half hours. I promise you they go by quick, especially because a lot of them are studios and you're working on things. So have a lot of work time and time to work with your professor. Classes are usually up to 20 people, sometimes even less than, which is so nice. In my opinion, I love that. I love having the one-on-one -on -one time with my professor that I get almost every class because of the lengthy time. And you also have a 15 minute break, which is really good. Sometimes I'll even walk out of the building, go take a walk, and then come back in. Our professors will even encourage that, like get out of the classroom, go get some water, walk around. Um, my film professor, my last quarter specifically was like go outside get some fresh air some people would like go get food at Arnold there's like a little Arnold market and you can just walk down there during break get some food and go back up which is really nice bring snacks especially if you haven't looked back to that classes which I actually really liked I had an 8 a.m. and an 11 a.m last quarter and I loved it because then I had the rest of the day just to hang out but I did get hungry in between so definitely bring a snack some type of cliff bar which they sell at the convenience stores like the Turner convenience store the hives C store and you can use your dining dollars for that I will be talking about the meal plan don't worry SCAD is on a quarter system so three quarters is full-time you graduate in four years with three quarters per year there are ten week periods so the classes do move quickly and you will want to to stay on track so that's another reason not to miss class if you miss one class you can fall behind don't fret make friends in the classes make those connections especially not only for friendships but for professional opportunities every day that you're at SCAD and you're meeting people not only your professors but the people your peers that are sitting around you that are taking the same class as you you never know who's gonna be your future employer or collaboration so I would take into consideration your professionalism and then about classes we don't have classes on Fridays which is really nice you will want to take advantage of those don't think it's like oh a oh, three-day weekend every week no we don't have classes on Fridays for reasons and that's because we have workshops, master classes to attend to, SCAD AMP. Also, we need that time to work on our projects. Utilize that day, at least to pace out your weekend and your schoolwork. Foundation classes are classes that everyone needs to take. For example, attach here of the film and television foundation courses. If you go to SCAD's website and click on any of their programs, 
it will show the foundation courses that are required for that major. I had to take color theory and 3D design. Trust me, from someone who draws stick figures, like I said, I'm film, photo, acting, like nothing that I have to have a pen and paper for. Did not have any painting experience, any drawing experience before I came. And trust me, you'll be fine. Your professors are so understanding and will guide you through it. I was pushed. I definitely felt like I was challenged, but that's what I wanted. And I felt like I saw such progress within my skills and I developed so many new skills. Professors, your professors are there to help you. Definitely take advantage of them. They have office hours, again, a lot of times on Fridays, but also during the week, they'll have Zooms. So if you just wanna hop on Zoom or you can go in person into their office if you don't have class, Take advantage of that. Their emails are mostly all open. Workload really does vary professor to professor. I was in my first film class, my first quarter, and I had a professor that was extremely amazing, but extremely heavy on the workload. However, that workload pushed my time management skills and challenged them to the fullest. I learned so much. And I didn't feel like any of the workload was busy work. I was pushed, I was challenged, but I learned so much. Other than that film class, I'd say it was pretty reasonable amount of workload. Check rate my professors when you're signing up for classes just to see what each professor's teaching styles look like, students' past perspectives and experiences with that class and that professor. Take it with a grain of salt though. Like if you get a professor that doesn't have amazing reviews, take a deep breath, it's gonna be okay. You'll be able to develop your own perspective and experience. My advice to you would be just be open and be respectful. I had a teacher this year that received really low ratings on Rate My Professor, but when I had them, they were amazing. In my experience, that was my own personal experience, but they were literally rated like a, a two on Rate My Professor, and I felt like I learned so much and really enjoyed having them as my professor, but to each their own. And I will say a lot of the Rate My Professors tend to be true. That was the only one that I was like, really? Just read every response and kind of see what they're saying. If you're looking at Rate My Professors, also rate your professors, like give them reviews. If you had a good experience or a bad experience, be respectful and also be diplomatic in your response. So, you know, be professional in your response. Don't be like, oh my gosh, this teacher really stunk. Send. If you have something to say as to a reason why maybe you didn't enjoy them, talk about maybe they didn't provide office hours or maybe they didn't, you know, work one-on-one -on -one with the students at all or provide, you know, they didn't have as much experience as you would have liked them. Provide actual substantial information and you'll also have course evaluations through SCAD that you can do too and just provide all the feedback you can. Class registration. My current student at SCAD actually put this and I thought it was really smart. They said talk about the class registration and the amount of students at SCAD. When you're registering for classes, this is something that SCAD I think needs to work on or at least they, they just need more professors and more classes because students can't get into them. SCAD gives you a date and a time for your registration based on your academic hours that you have. So if you came in with credit, like transfer credit, which I'll be talking about right after this, for me personally, I came in with 35 hours worth of transfer credit. And so I got placed at the 7 a.m. time versus the people that had 7 p.m. time on that freshman registration date. So I got all the classes that I wanted to get into for second quarter. Those people with that 7 p.m. time, a lot of the classes, at least the classes with the professors that they wanted, even a lot of the classes that they needed to get into, like they just couldn't get into, especially for when you start getting into your major courses. I've heard, I had a friend, that friend who told me to talk about this actually, you know, couldn't get into the class that he needed to because he needed to take this class that next quarter so that he could progress to the next class because you have to go in order with some of your major courses, you know, take one before you get to two. And he couldn't take one to get to two the next quarter and he needed to be in two the next quarter. So talk to your advisor about those things, but registration days can be stressful for some people. And that leads me into saying, if you can take transfer credit and AP courses and dual enrollment in high school, do it. One, it saves you so much money, which we'll be talking about scholarships in a moment. If someone were to ask me, how do I save money, like aside from scholarships and going coming to SCAT, take your general education courses in high school through community college and dual enrollment and AP. Also maybe take some over the summer. I took both my art histories, my drawing, my public speaking, my math, English, 
I had my AP photo or AP 2D design that transferred for Design 100. I do all of those through community college and I still plan to take my business through community college too. Business one, I do wanna take some business classes through SCAD because I know that they're very good. If you're an art history major, by all means, take the art history class at SCAD. You are going to get the best quality there. But for me, the $4,300 value there are aside from scholarships. So you can pay $4,000 at SCAD or you can pay 500 to 600 at a community college for the same credit that will transfer, go with that one. That would definitely be my suggestion if you're looking for ways to save money and you might not have as big of a scholarship. Take those gen eds through community college and, and it will help you in registration and it will be able to give you time to, I personally want to have three different minors. Another reason why I wanted to take those classes through community college and get them over with because I needed time in my schedule. For transfer credit at SCAD, you will want to look on their website, which I can link all these helpful links, the AP descriptions that they take and the scores that you have to have in the description. If you're interested in taking community college classes that will transfer to SCAD, make sure you get the right ones. Don't try to decipher that on your own. So talk with a transfer advisor. After coming to SCAD, you have to make sure that you get approval from SCAD before taking any other transfer classes. Like I took classes this past summer through community college, again, art history drawing, and I had to make sure that I submitted a transient form, which looks like this. I had to put in a class that I'm requesting to transfer from the college, and then I'll submit it, and they either, either approve it or decline it. You'll have to go through that process before you take any community college classes after coming to SCAD. Someone asked, how soon will I start my major and minor courses? It all depends on you. The first quarter at SCAD, you will have your schedule sent to you. For example, I was signed up for English 142 because I had already taken an English class that was dual enrollment in high school and it transferred for my English 123 credit. So I moved on to the next English credit. And they saw the amount of credit that I had and they put me in one of my major courses first quarter, which was awesome. So I got to start my major courses right when I got to SCAD because I had AP dual enrollment and community college credit already in there. I was also signed up to take Drawing 100 when I first got there. However, I personally wanted to take Drawing through Community College because I could, and so I decided to go to an advisor that weekend before classes started and get that changed to a 3D design class, which I did also have to have for my major. And then you also have to take first year experience. It's basically an extended orientation taught by the student success advisors. Sometimes you'll have a SCAD AMP workshop, a SCAD Pro workshop. I also took one of my minor courses during winter quarter because I had the time and space and room in my schedule. So it all depends on you. First quarter is the only quarter where SCAD picks your classes for you. The rest of them, you register and you pick your classes. They do have what are called sequencing guides that you can find in my SCAD. Here's an example sequencing guide. They give you kind of a general guide to what track you should be on, what classes you should be taking in each quarter. For me personally, I wanted to take a minor course in my first year so that I could make my mind up if I wanted to possibly switch my major to that. I wanted to be able to dabble into those different classes early on so that later on if I got into those minor classes and I was like, shoot, I like this so much more. I wish I would have known this earlier and I would have just switched my major before it was too late. So that's how quickly you can start your major minor courses. It depends. Look at those sequencing guides. Let's say you come in with two classes that transferred to SCADs. Maybe it's your art history and your English and you want to minor in something. So now you can look at your schedule and if you want to start it early on, look and see if there's a place, there's an art history that you'd usually take. See if you can put one of your minor classes there. Now, I will say, it depends if you can get in, because again, with that registration time, those major courses get hard to get into. I wanted to take a photo class spring quarter, but I couldn't get in. There was one class for it and I couldn't get in. I was even on the wait list and I was number one on the wait list, but nobody dropped it. And that's okay, that's okay. I'm just letting you know that stuff happens and don't be disappointed if it does. Your advisor will work with you, but that is something to be aware of. Let's talk about food, food and meal plans. How do they work? What are they? What are the different ones? What would I suggest that you get as a first year? Here are the different options that you have. And you'll see meal plan A is the 18 meals a week. I don't know anyone who had this one. 
I started on meal plan B, where you have 14 meals a week and eat 150 dining dollars. I liked it for the most part, however, when comparing it to C, here are the flaws with meal plan B. You can only scan every four hours. So for example, so you have an 11 a.m. and you wanna get a smoothie before class. So I'll get a smoothie at B-Fuel using one of my meal swipes, and then I want to go to lunch right after, three hours later. I can't because you have to have four hours between each meal. Now, I could buy my smoothie with my dining dollars, that's great, but a lot of times I like to make my use my meal swipes because your meal swipes disappear with that plan. Meal plan B, you only have 14 a week. I went out of town for a weekend with my parents for a wedding, and I got back and I had six meal swipes left that just went to waste. And there was nothing I could do about it, they just disappeared. With meal plan C, you don't have a time restriction, you can swipe whenever you want, and you get 135 meals per quarter. And trust me, it'll be plenty. I remember I had so many meal swipes left over at the end of second and third quarter from having that meal plan. Dining dollars you can use at the C store. I use them to get cliff bars every week for my classes. Meal plan C is the cheapest. Meal plan C, you don't have a time restriction and you never run out of your meal swipes like you do with the other meal plans per week. This is what the app looks like and you can see that you can keep track of your dining dollars and your meal swipes and how many you've been using. Dining halls, vegetarian options, gluten-free options, things like that. Yes, they have them. I personally am not vegetarian. I would try to go gluten-free a lot of times. However, I'm not someone that has an allergy, so I can't speak to how good they are about sensitivity. If you're someone with a severe allergy to gluten, but I can tell you, as someone who chooses to eat gluten-free sometimes, that they have a ton of options. At Chatham, they even have gluten-free pasta, gluten-free pizza. What are my favorite dining halls? I'd say my favorite dining hall at the end was Chatham. And also there's a new dining hall that's going to be in River House. There are 14 dining facilities in Scad Savannah. There's Amigos Nuevos, which is in Turner. It's a little Mexican place that you can use to order up app. You can order tacos, quesadillas, uh, burritos, burrito bowls, and Amigos is a place that's open up till midnight. Those late late night study breaks when you have a quesadilla sounds just right, there you go. The Arnold Micro Market. This isn't really a dining hall per se, but it's a dining facility they call it because they have, you know, sandwiches and things like that and snacks available there. That's in Arnold Hall. Arts. I've never been there, but that's listed as a dining facility. I feel like arts, I can't remember, can you use your dining dollars here? B-Fuel. B-Fuel is the smoothie place inside of the hive. You can get smoothies, coffee, frappuccinos, and they taste just like Starbucks. I mean, I'm not a coffee person personally, so I get the smoothies and the frappuccinos. Vanilla frappuccino, get it with normal milk, and or, or even coconut milk. It tastes just like Starbucks, and they actually, I'm pretty sure they use the exact Starbucks recipes. Like, they have the Starbucks cups, the straws, everything. But there's Boathouse. Boathouse is another favorite. They have a noodle, grill, garden, and, and the deli. So they have different segments, and you just use that order up app. There's Bite Cafe, which is in the animation building, which is a lot like the Hive, but I've heard it's better. I don't know if I ever ate at Bite. I ate in Bite, like with my carnival meal. They needed more seating one night because carnival was really busy, so I went in there. But I've heard it's really good. I've heard Bites, like they have really good options. There's the Hive. You've probably heard mixed reviews about the Hive. I personally really liked it. What I will say is that it got repetitive, you know, because I ate at the Hive because I lived there all the time. I would eat there. So while they mix up the options, you know, there's still the same types of things and it just, venture out would be my advice. Just venture out, like sample different spots because if you eat so much of something, you're gonna get tired of it and you're gonna be like, oh, this isn't as good as it was because you're eating it over and over. There's Carnival. Carnival's so good. Um, they have rice, chicken, sushi, veggies, just, mm -hmm. Very good spot. Chatham Cafe, again, just love the cauliflower crust pizzas and the salmon teriyaki bowl and the Dorito taco salad. So good. Dr. B's, Dr. B's is another coffee place. You can order through the Order Up app and you can use your dining dollars or meal swipe on those drinks. Forage is the convenience store uh, next to Boathouse in Victory Village. A lot like the convenience store at the Hive, but much bigger. So. If you aren't familiar with Victory Village, I'll talk about the different residence halls in a moment. But Victory Village has an apartment suite building as one of their three buildings. They have Sail and Surf, which are regular dorm style, and then there's Sand, which uh, are apartment style suites. 
in that convenience store they have things like eggs, things, you know, baking mixes, things that you can use in those apartment suites. They also have a coffee area, really nice sitting area. I would totally go there and just hang out. Griffin? Griffin. I actually don't know where this is, but it's listed as a dining facility. Gryphon? It says that they're unable to accept meal plans, so I think that's why I've never heard or been there. <laughs> Ration. Ration is o an O-House. Again, a lot of these you probably would have seen if you want to see what their food options look like or what my personal experiences were when I what I ordered. Go watch my vlogs. I pretty much show everything that I do, everything that I eat, my classes. Like I take you guys everywhere, so if you guys want to see what some of those food options look like, what I eat on a daily basis, check those out. Tag Cafe is located in the SCAD Museum of Art. I've personally never purchased anything from there. I do not believe that they accept meal plans. Some of the SCAD signature events that are hosted in Savannah that I've personally had experience with would be the Film Studio for One, which, oh my gosh, guys, was amazing. I was able to attend so many different Q&As with different actors, directors, as well as just see so many different movies and attend master classes and workshops with directors and actors. Gosh, it was just amazing. The other thing I had to do was volunteer. My main job was being an usher or a VIP seater. And on my first day on the job of being a VIP seater, which basically I just kind of watched over the VIP seating, directed people with VIP tickets to their seats, I was put on a job to be a road blocker for Natalie Portman. Natalie was coming in just to watch a movie. She got a row to herself, and so there was a couple of us on each uh, end just like making sure nobody entered that row. And I just like to say, you know, I, like I'll like, tell people about this. I'm like, yeah, I just got to sit back and watch a movie with Natalie Portman one day. <laughs> it wasn't quite like that, but it, it was pretty darn cool. Then, two weeks later, outside of the film festival, if you haven't watched this vlog already, go ahead and watch my vlog from first quarter. I go to Natalie Portman's masterclass. I did not show her at all in that vlog, I will say, but I do show me going and the excitement uh, that I had. We're not supposed to take videos or pictures or anything. We're supposed to honor the professional's time there, take notes, soak up the information that she has to offer for us. So I got to attend a masterclass from her, uh, from an actor perspective as well as she did she's also done some directing so that was cool to see both sides and hear about her experiences and then the next day that was a that was a Friday I got to work on set which I wasn't able to say at the time but now the movie is out it's called May December and it was the movie she was working on that weekend I do show me going to set I wasn't able to take any pictures or anything of me on set no actors anything but I update progress throughout the day I wasn't able to talk about the movie or anything at that point in time but that is out it is May December and I got to like be an, a paid extra on a movie with Natalie Portman, Charles Melton, Piper, I think Piper Yerda, is that her name? Julianne Moore, I mean, just incredible actors and I, it was a huge set. It was it was amazing. And those opportunities, I will say, come often. They're the Walking Dead shoots there all of the time. So I've gotten to be paid extras on other sets throughout the year. Movies that aren't out yet, so I can't talk about those. Savannah is a very popular filming location. They'll even use SCAD facilities one time. I got to be on set of a movie Sony was shooting on the XR stage. Well, I say I was on set. I just kind of got to watch set for that day um, in my film class. My professor was working on the set during our class period and he said, well, why don't you guys just come on set for your class? Sidewalk Arts Festival. The sidewalks of Forsyth are covered in these beautiful chalk drawings and people take hours on them. There's winners at the end and there's different categories. Sand Arts Festival, I was on set this weekend so I couldn't go, but people go to Tybee and they have these giant sculptures made out of sand and there's the fashion show. I remember that was in Atlanta. Like people would drive over and do that and some people actually got to walk in it, even as freshmen. There was the Define Art with different fashion and fibers, people that came. Anyways, lots of cool events. Sporting events, sports. A lot of people like to go to the lacrosse games. The sports offered at Scat Savannah are bowling, cross country, cycling, equestrian, esports, League of Legends, esports, Overwatch, golf, lacrosse, soccer, swimming, tennis, and track and field. So if you are in high school and are wanting to play those in college, definitely check out SCAD's teams. Applying to SCAD, what are the admission requirements for first-time students? That would be your application, 
the non-refundable $100 application fee, your final junior year transcript or beyond, your SAT or ACT scores are optional through fall of 2023 for domestic applicants only. The last thing you have to have is evidence of English proficiency if English is not your first language. Notice that a portfolio, resume, and essay are not in that requirement. Now, you will want to submit those things. For my application, I did submit an essay. I applied through Common App, I believe, because I was applying to all the other schools through that app, but there's also an application on SCAD's website. You can submit your letters of recommendation, submit your resume, your portfolio. All those things will help you with scholarships at SCAD. I submitted a portfolio. For those of you who don't know, I photographer and I have a photography business that I've been running since my sophomore year of high school so I took like I think it was like 10 pictures of my best work and then I also submitted uh, I think two wedding films that I had taken through my business as well and submitted those for portfolios slash scholarship opportunities and I did receive a scholarship that's called my achievement scholarship through SCAD. And then I also received an academic honors scholarship for my transcripts, grades, things like that. The portfolio types that are accepted for the Achievement Scholarship submission would be business and marketing, visual arts, time-based media, visual and time-based media, writing, performing arts, and equestrian. So if you have any work, or even if you don't have any work, make something or record something. You just, you never know what the littlest amount of effort into creating will get you. I mean, it's better than not trying. I could award you a substantial scholarship to come to SCAD. SCAD is on rolling admission, which means that you can apply and get accepted at any time within 30 days, of course, of when you're supposed to start. So anytime before that, make sure you're on it with your portfolio submission. Don't rush it, take your time, make sure it's your best quality work. But do keep in mind that timing is of the essence and that you will want to make sure that you can get everything in sooner the better so that you have more of a chance of getting more scholarship money. Because you know, if you think about it, once they give all that they have out there, then you know, they don't have as much left to give. They won't have those bigger scholarship amounts left to award. So I received those two scholarships. I also applied for a scholarship appeal. So after I received kind of my final number scholarship from SCAD, my achievement scholarship and my academic honors scholarship that was a number and so then I requested for a scholarship appeal in which I basically just emailed my admissions advisor and said it is my understanding that I've been allotted a total of blank in scholarship money thus far. I am writing to appeal for an additional blank bringing a scholarship total of blank per year. This money would make it extremely more feasible for me to attend SCAD and I received a substantial portion of the money that I requested. So all in all of my scholarships that came from SCAD, I had that achievement scholarship, the academic honors scholarship, and the student incentive scholarship or that scholarship appeal. Scholarships that come outside of SCAD, I would use bold.org. I received scholarships from there. I would recommend looking for local scholarships, asking your high school counselor what scholarship options there are. Look up some art competitions. There's federal financial aid, state aid. There's also student employment slash work study. Student employment for me this next year, upcoming year, and I guess spring quarter was my training to be a student ambassador, which I did get paid for. Now I'm a full-time student ambassador ambassador as of this fall. So I'm excited to start that job. That will help me financially. You come for SCAD day, which I totally recommend. If you're going to come visit SCAD, yes, they have tours, you know, every week, but if you're going to make the trip, like especially if you're out of state, come on a SCAD day. You will be able to walk into all the buildings that you want, talk to professors, talk to students, talk to me. <laughs> I'll be working all the SCAD days from now on as a student ambassador. They even have some workshops and demos. Check out my vlog. It would have been my second weekend in the life vlog with Jenna, my cousin. She came to visit and we went to SCAD day towards the end of the vlog on Saturday. So if you're interested in what that can look like for you, check that out. I also applied to be an RA or a resident assistant this year and I get paid through scholarship or aid. And I receive $12,000 a year for that job. So that will pay, you know, for the majority of my housing most likely. 
So you get $300 for training and then $3,900 per quarter. So the three quarters there. That number, that 12,000 is in addition to my other scholarships. So definitely apply for jobs if you can, once coming to SCAD, if that's something you're able to do on campus versus off campus and the housing situation. So if you are living on campus, you get 100% of your scholarship. But if you move off campus, SCAD takes away 30% of your scholarship. In doing the math, I remember some people I knew that were moving off campus, they did the math with their 30% of their scholarship gone, and it was still cheaper for them to move off campus. So that could be possible for you. For me personally, I did the math for that, and it was not worth it for me to move off campus with the scholarship amount that I received. Definitely take that into consideration when thinking about off-campus versus on-campus housing. SCAD does have apartment-style housing. I will be living in apartment-style housing this year. Like I said, I'll be an RA at Sand at Victory Village, and Sand at Victory Village is all apartment-style suites, as well as Boundary and Barnard are also apartment-style suites. Now, all of Victory Village is not apartment-style. Only Sand and Victory Village is apartment-style. The other two, Sail and Surf, are dorm-style. The housing situation is something to talk about. I didn't have this issue, again, because I applied to be an RA, so I received my housing assignment before anybody went through the housing sign-up process. However, I've heard that the housing sign-up process was hectic and that some people didn't even get placed in rooms and paid their housing fee and got put on a waiting list. Now, I'm hoping that, you know, now that they're building up the river house dorms, you know, they're constantly building and expanding, so hoping that those people were able to be placed somewhere, but housing can be crazy. I know that I had a lot of friends that were hoping to be put in apartment style suites for the next year. They really wanted to have a kitchen and they couldn't get into them because they had already been filled up. Just like class registration, housing applications are the same way for class registration, seniors, juniors, sophomores, freshmen. Like that's the order it goes for who gets classes first. Same with the housing, seniors, juniors, sophomores, freshmen get first pick. So the more credit you have, the more likely you are to get the housing facility of your choice. Random facts about SCAD, Savannah has a paper mill. <laughs> and it can smell outside depending on how the wind is blowing so that's just something that i didn't know before coming and i thought you might like to know <laughs> is there a pharmacy close by yes i usually walk to cbs it's right by broughton street and yes medical center there is one elos extended learning opportunities you'll probably have to have these in some of your classes not all professors require them, but a lot of them do. You usually have to have three for the professors that do require them. And basically they just want you to go out and experience some of the SCAD signature events or the workshops, yes, Singistos, a SCAD AMP workshop. They just want you to be attending the extracurricular events that SCAD offers and then they usually have you submit proof that you went there and maybe maybe write about them, it just depends. SCAD does offer tutoring. Like I said, I took English 142 Foundations of Story, the writing lab that was open on Sundays, like 2 to 4 p.m. or something. Anyways, so helpful. Also, I didn't really have any script writing experience before my Film 100 class first quarter. So I went on my SCAD and went to the peer tutoring link, filled out Film 100, script writing help, and met with a tutor like I think the next day or the next two days. And they were so helpful. This guy has really good help for all of your classes, not just those gen eds, like any of your classes. They have students and faculty. Again, use your professor's office hours. Someone's asking about social life and Christian activities, clubs. So yes, all, all those things. I'm involved in SCAD Serve, which is the service community at SCAD. Go watch my last vlog. There's always events happening. Just check your SCAD app or in my SCAD and see what's going on for the day. Maybe attend a SCAD AMP workshop. There's always something to be doing and people to meet. You can go to the beach with your friends. Tybee Island is one of my favorite places to go. It's like a 35 minute drive. What is the party scene? So I personally, I don't drink new drugs, anything like that. I've been to like parties, like 18 plus parties, like at Elon, which if you haven't seen, look at two vlogs ago, the weekend in my life as a SCAD student went there and I am able to show you what one of the parties looks like. I look at Elon Savannah's Instagram page and just see if there's any 18 plus events 
that look fun to go to. People will also have people in their dorms. There's There was definitely a room on our floor in particular that would have people over every weekend and they would be playing their music. I've heard that there are house parties like a lacrosse boys party and there's just different clubs and things. So yes, the scene is there. I don't have a lot of experience and like I said, I don't partake into the alcohol and smoking or anything like that. But I've personally had a great experience going to Elon for those like two experiences. So Christian activities, there is SCAD crew, there's the porch, there's CBC college, which I attend, there's Compassion Church college group, there's also RUF at SCAD. Consistently, I go to CBC college on Thursday nights at 7.30. So much fun and a great community of Jesus-loving people who have nothing but kindness and love to share and would love to have you as part of the community. So definitely check that out. Supplies, don't buy them until you get to class. Unless you need something for your pre-quarter assignments that you have to complete before your first day of class, don't get them yet. Just wait until you get to class to see what your professor actually says. Same with the textbooks. And a lot of the online textbooks are available or people have textbooks from past classes that are selling them online. Like, don't buy the brand new ones. General list of supplies. Look at your syllabus. Take all the art supplies that you have from home. Like things that you don't even think that you're like, oh, like I have these markers, I don't know if I need them, take them. You, trust me, you will never know. Like in my 3D design class, I need the most random things for some of my projects. Like you can add feathers for decoration. You can have cut up colored, old colored pencils, paints. Take all the art supplies that you have at home and then from there, see uh, what's on your syllabus. When those come out, you will have plenty of time. And don't buy everything brand new. There's Blick art materials that are down there. And there's also Starlandia. They resell art supplies, so check those places out before you buy brand new things that you might not use after the class. Also, a lot of your professors will have certain kits that you need to buy for the class. Make sure before looking and buying the kit, look at the materials and see if you have a lot of them. If you have a lot of them and you're only missing like two items that are in the kit, just buy the two items, don't buy the whole kit. But if you don't have anything, buy the kit. It's pretty beneficial. I'd buy a 3D design kit and a color theory kit. What is your full daily routine for the whole week and when do you personally have free time? Great question. Go check out all my vlogs. I mean, seriously, that would be the best way for me to answer this question is for you to see all that I do because I show you when I have free time and I show you when I go to class and what my full routines look like. Humidity, heat. I was nervous about what if the AC isn't good? The AC is fine, you'll be good. I remember one time our AC broke and we just filled out a little report, sent it in, and someone was there that day to fix it. And it was great, up and running by that night. Don't worry about the weather, honestly it's so nice and I got to go to the pool after class in November. Like, in Indiana I could never. Rest is so important and you want to make sure that you are getting your rest. Everything can be so go, 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 and there's always something to be doing, whether it's a workshop or hanging out with friends or going somewhere. It's just, it's a lot. I'm not <laughs> recommending that you stay in your dorm room and sleep all day, but I am saying just know that it's okay. Sometimes there's workshops and master classes and you just have so much work. As much as you wanna go to that workshop, you need to prioritize your project. Use time management be able to balance your work, social, and event life. Go to the study room in your dorms. Go to Clark Hall, especially if you're at the High Returner. I went to Clark Hall all the time, or Scad Beach, or the Scad Museum, or the library. I would bike to the library all the time. Does Scad Lacoste Quarter offer major courses, or would you recommend for foundations? Great question. So Scad Lacoste does offer major courses, however, only in certain quarters. Here I'll show what that looks like on the Scad the Cost website, and I'll also link that website with all the courses down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I wish you guys all the best if you are looking at Scad or an incoming freshman at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I just hope it's the best year. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. Best wishes. Take all this information with you, and I hope it helps a lot. I'll see you next time.